right now, but I'm sure the junior doctors will disagree. As promised, joining me in the studio now is the man himself, GB News presenter Nigel Farage. Another busy day for you. I see you've had a haircut. I have, absolutely. Campaign ready <laughs> uh, with a haircut. Right, let's talk about a few different stories which yeah. are, um, you know, both kind of uh, disturbing and amusing in equal measure. First of all, um, Michael Hesseltine's had a go. Let's just see mm. exactly what he said in his um, appearance at the Hay Festival today. This is what he said. Racism is basically what underpins UKIP and reform. I'm just over 90. I have lived through some of the most tumultuous events of our time. And anyone who is looking for the common theme, it's racism. So reform of racists, Nigel. Yep, I've heard that from Hesseltine time and time again. By the way, I thought he'd finally been put out to grass, but clearly not. Uh, he is, of course, a fanatical pro-European, fanatical globalist. He, he, if he's in my personal company, he sort of physically has mm. to... I mean, he literally Does he can't... speak to you or not? Uh, no, not really. Not really. I mean, I have done some debates with him head to head. Um, he's filled with bile, hatred, intolerance. I mean, he's a proper, he's a proper full on modern day liberal. Yes. <laughs> you know, he can't accept that anybody else has a different view. So rather than saying, well, you know what? I've got a different point of view. He sinks to abuse. Mm. He's been doing it over and over with UKIP, with me. Year I wonder whether he does year. it so much that people still listen. He's an old bore. OK, on that bombshell, let's move on to the next story. You're talking about how much you like a debate. Mm. You're on question time. I know. Tomorrow night, do you know who you're on with? No. It's just been announced. We're streeting, I know. OK. Piers Morgan. Good Lord. Piers... Happy about that? Well, I didn't know Piers had any opinions. Oh, So now. it's really... Well, what, no, what, well, what, what do you know what he stands for? And then on the other, he has an opinion. Yeah, yeah so I mean, he moves he with the wind. He can have some quite surprising opinions. You never so, know. That's quite good sparring, well, then. Be, you, it? Streeting and Morgan. Well, that programme, which used to be massive, you know, when we were all younger, I'm older than you, but Robin Day and then Dimbleby, of course, yeah. for 25 years, it was the real agenda-setting programme of the week. It's diminished hugely over the years. This will be my 37th appearance on mm. Question Time, but first one for five years. Um, if Piers is on, well, yes, it could be great fun. Could be fireworks. You were made to sign. I've been on Question Time myself, oh, yeah. and I am familiar with the paperwork you have to I sign. I couldn't believe it. Having done 36 Question Times in the past, albeit for, you know, not for five years. Not that you're counting. So I had to put, you know, name, no problem with that. Email, OK, fine. Phone number, mm, all right, you better have that in case I get delayed in traffic. Yes. And then I had to look to clause... 13. Yes. Was I happy for my data to be shared? You've got a video of this. And I never check. I never check the details. For once I did, I was horrified. Oh, all right. So you didn't have to clarify your gender or anything like that on the form? I, I, I just, Are you non binary? Can you, I, I, I can just you confirm put, with us now? I put a bloody great big no with an exclamation mark. I wasn't going to fill it in. Right. Before I came on air. Diversity. Diversity. Uh, and yeah. inclusion. Of course. Indeed. Of course. Uh, no. Hesseltine would be proud. Not playing that game. Um, earlier, I um, was waiting to come on, and obviously I'm flicking through my emails, and I get all of the Telegraph kind of Westminster copy coming through, mm. and one of my colleagues, I think it was Nick Guttridge, had written a piece suggesting that you had suggested that you might be up for a deal with the Conservatives. Can you just clarify that? No. Because you said something about having a conversation with Tories no, no, in no, return no, for no. something. I was asked this morning on, on one of the Sun programmes I was on, yeah. I was asked, well, why don't you stand down for X? Why don't you stand down for Y? Well, number one, I'm not the leader anyway. Mm. But over the years, you know, what did I do in 2019? I, I formed the Brexit Party. We got rid of Mrs May. Did the Tories a huge favour. I stood aside for Boris Johnson. Yeah. Over the years, when I led UKIP, we stood aside for various Eurosceptics. Rather than me being asked all the time what I'm going to give the Conservatives, what are they going to give me back? Well, what would you have asked for? Stand to, aside in 30 seats that we can win? Well, that sort of thing. But, yeah. they, but they will give us nothing. They would rather... They'd rather the party was obliterated. And we've seen this before. They'd rather be obliterated than even talk to me. Well, Rishi so there, Sunak, there is no deal. Rishi Sunak has responded oh, really? today to that. the idea of a deal. Let's see what he said. There is only going to be one of two people who is going to be Prime Minister on July the 5th. It's either Keir Starmer or me. So the choice for everyone in this election and the vote for anyone who isn't the Conservative candidate is a vote to put Keir Starmer into number 10. Pressed about whether he was ruling out such a deal, Mr Sunak said... Yes. Good. It was never going to be a deal anyway. This is pure media speculation on the back of me saying, I give all the time, I get nothing back. What are they going to give? But here's the truth of it. People will, in a couple of weeks' time, 
sit down for breakfast on a Sunday morning with the family, brunch, whatever they do, and they'll realise the election's over. Labour have won. Mm. So actually, the real debate, if you are centre, centre, right, the real debate isn't about who's going to be the next Prime Minister. That is settled. It's over. It's about who, who's going to be the voice of opposition in the next parliament. Fair enough. We've just got some breaking news, which you can react to as well. Diane Abbott has said, by any means possible, I will continue to stand as the candidate for Hackney North. So just to put this into context, after she wrote what appeared to be an anti-Semitic letter to the Observer newspaper mm. some months ago, she was stripped of the Labour whip. She has recently had the Labour whip restored after apologising pretty quickly, to be fair, undergoing anti-Semitism awareness training and uh, squaring things with Labour. But subsequent to that, she then told The Telegraph this morning that even though she'd had the whip restored, that she wasn't being allowed to stand for Labour. Keir Starmer then appears on the campaign trail saying, oh, I haven't heard anything about this. And actually, she's perfectly free to stand for Labour. She hasn't been banned, but it's still ongoing, this investigation. So now she's saying that she wants to stand for Hackney North. I don't know whether that means for Labour or as an independent. Your reaction? I mean, she's been around the block a bit. She was first elected to Hackney North in 1987. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a long she's time. She's 70 years old. Yeah. Let's not take this away from her. You know, she was the first black female MP in Parliament. She's been a massive pioneer and an inspiration to people of colour coming into politics. I think the way that Starm has handled this has been poor. If you're going to give the whips up to back to somebody, you surely allow them to stand for your party. It wasn't the same with Corbyn. They took the whip away. No, they it's didn't a mess. Give it back. It, it, he's got himself into a terrible mess. I suspect she will stand for Labour. That's, that's the way it feels to me right mm. now, because having gone as far as to restore the whip, how can they possibly not let her stand as a candidate? I guess that would happen, but there is a ruthlessness now in the Labour Party. Yes. They are. I mean, he wanted to clear out the Corbynites, and I get that. Because he wants to say to the country, I've changed the Labour Party. Mm. And to give him credit, to some extent he has. Yeah. To some extent he has. But I think in Diane Abbott's case, they'll make an exception. He's get, well, also, it's overshadowed all of the NHS stuff today. So it's been a spectacular... Yeah, movie. and that's bad party management. Indeed so. Right. Thank you very much. Thank Nigel. you. Loving your hair. I've enjoyed it. Well done. Well, yeah, do come back. I mean, it's your show after all, let's be honest.